So now we're getting somewhere. Got the legs done. So you can kind of see here, the reason for all of this and for these all threads is I can loosen up these handles and I can rotate this, this vise. I can rotate it so I can work on it all different directions. It's really important to do that, uh, to be able to do that, uh, depending on what job you're doing. Also, some guys will just build one of these, the, the top part here, and uh, put it on a workbench, and that'll work fine too. You don't have to build the stand, and if you don't have a big shop, it doesn't take up as much space. The downside with that, the reason why I didn't do it, is, is one, it's not portable. I want to be able to take it places and, and do demonstrations and such. And the other thing is you're not able to work around the back side of the saw. I found in the class that there were some things I wanted to do. I wanted to work on both sides of the saw. To be able to come around and access both sides for me was really important. So I'll show you uh, some details that I did here that are kind of cool and how all this works and then we'll work on the bracing. The bracing is really important because we want this thing to be rock solid. We don't want any movement or wiggling around while we're swaging or filing because we put a lot of force on it. So we'll brace this up so it's super strong. Uh, but also we want to maintain and keep the ability to break it down into smaller pieces so we can transport it. So let's get, to, uh, let's get going on that. You know, I'm always going on and on about detail and I like detail on things. Here's a little something that I added that uh, uh, really turned out well is I made these little custom handles out of an old file and the square nuts, it's kind of old fashioned style and these old file handles, these were my grandfather's and I had a matching set and so I, I thought it was kind of cool because what, when you're sharpening saws you call it filing saws and the actual very handle, the, the handles that you use to orient, orient the, the bait, lock the uh, device in uh, are file handles so that's just one of those details that uh, makes me smile. Right here also, this is uh, an adjustment let me bring you that back here a little bit. So we can change the height of the file of the saw or the vise. And I found this to be very important when I was working on them to be able to adjust these. And so I'm going to make, try to find file handles some more and make a pin so I can raise and lower this. Like this. I added six inches to the height of this vise because uh, me being taller, uh, the other ones just didn't go up quite to the height that I would have liked. So the extra six inches makes a big difference. We're almost there, two pieces to go. I've got the stretcher, which is a two by five, full dimension. I'm getting ready to cut the uh, tenon on here. And as you can see there on the legs, there's a square there, a square there chiseled out. That'll connect the two right there. So I'll cut these out, get it in, and then we'll put that last knee brace on and we should be about set. One last piece to go, uh, less a tool tray, but for the main structure. So you can right, see right here the 45 knee brace uh, with the 5 16 3 8 maybe, all thread. Bolted that all the way through. Same with the bottom, so we got this piece right here for the other side, matched piece, and we'll drill it and bolt it together, and then uh, build the tool tray.
So there it is, complete. Less a tool tray, I'll put a tool tray across the bottom, but that'll be for another time. I've got to take it all apart and sand it, uh, clean it all up. This is just the, the rough cut, but man, it turned out great. Kind of did the Amish style wedge lock there on the stretcher, both sides. We'll keep that tight. I uh, kind of took, a, I guess, my basic outline from the Forest Service plan, but I saw using it uh, many, well, I, I saw much room for improvement. This is designed so I can break it all down with no tools. I simply have to uh, pull the two wedges, that releases the stretcher, release, release the two uh, file clamps, take out the top section, and it'll break down into four neat pieces I can easily put into a truck. So, turned out really nice. Um, I used a, on the stretcher a, a two, full dimension 2x5, two gave it a little bit of, uh, of heft there. Dimensionally it looks great. Nice contrast with the 2x4s on the side. But nice project, a lot of work, more work than I was expecting. Everything bolted together, so I can, uh, if I need to replace something or take it apart, be easily done. But this, it's very sturdy, it's very simple to use. One thing I see I would do different, for, you, for those of you guys who are going to build one, is this all thread, um, put that above top center. Because what happens is I put it a little bit below top center and it's top heavy. So when I release the clamps, if I don't hold it, the whole thing swivels down. And that was unfortunate, but that's one of those things. You learn by doing and I'll know next time. But um, 36 inch knee braces. Looks great, really sturdy. Uh, I, I like it. I think it's a, a great design. I, I didn't put any side to side bracing like the Forest Service did. I don't think it's necessary. I think it. Uh, I think it's going to be just fine. The tool tray will also will fit in here, and I'll be able to adjust that up and down. So it'll be a, a, just a, a like a two by six that goes across there with with lips on it, so I could lay all my tools in there when I'm working. That's really nice to have. And that's the only thing I have left to do. But that's it. The Wrangler Star Crosscut Saw Bench.